dump that bitch. You've heard me say it. Sometimes we say the short form of DTB. By the way, I don't know if you look at the uh, Urban Dictionary online. DTB and dump that bitch are now part of the Urban Dictionary. And I, for one, am proud. Because we all know where that originated. Right here. Right here where I'm standing, God damn it! Many times you guys have called in and you have told me about those whiny chicks, those chicks who want to spend all your money, the chicks who constantly critique and criticize and complain, the chicks who stamp their little feet, the chicks who make scenes, the chicks who are always telling you what to do and what not to do, stop hanging out with those friends, stop smoking weed, stop drinking beer, stop hanging out with your feet up on the ottoman, stop watching football, stop watching any number of other sports or ESPN or whatever. What you need to start doing, get the garbage out by 6 o'clock or else proposed to be by February 14th or it's all over. The ultimatums that come out, I mean, it's just one thing after another. And when you guys call in with that, there's only one solution. I tell you to dump that bitch. Now, of course, when I advise a caller dump that bitch, in most cases, with a few exceptions for people who actually did call back and update us. In most cases, we don't know whether you actually did it and what went down when you did do it. So every once in a while, I like to, uh, because I, I must tell you, eight years of therapy, what has it done for me? It taught me how to say no or there's the door or get out. Now, in fact, it not only taught me how to do that, I relish it. I enjoy it. God, I love telling someone to get lost, hit the road, hit the bricks, don't let the door hit you on the way out. I love it. I used to dread that. And I know many of you guys are calling, oh, what am I going to do if she's going to cry? Shut up! Who cares if she cries? She'll cry, all right. If you do it right, you have to make this the most demeaning, demeaning, humiliating experience she's ever had. One she'll regret for the rest of her life. One she'll be telling the next boyfriend about. You want to be that guy. You want to be the guy she complains about to the next guy. Have you ever noticed what women tell you about the guy who was a real creep? That guy got laid good. He got it good. The helpful guy, the thoughtful guy, the caring guy. He's never the sexy hot guy. He's always the guy who has nothing else to offer. You know, just like uh, fat and fugly women tend to specialize in, for example, oral skills because they got nothing else to offer. The guy who's got no game, oh, he's, oh, are you kidding? The flowers, the candy, the cards, never forgets a birthday, never forgets that it's been three whole days since your first date, never forgets to call you, never forgets to call you 16 times a day like a goddamn stalker. Poindexter always remembers the important things. Now, if Poindexter had any game and knew how to get the job done, he wouldn't have to remember anything. You want to be the jerk. You want to be the guy who says, hit the road, sweetie. Get out of here. You don't want to be the guy going, oh, this is hard for me to say. You know, when you criticize me, it... just forget about it. You don't want to be that guy. You want to be the guy who kicks her through the uprights. You want to be the guy who dumped, didn't just dump her, dumped her good. You really tossed her out. That's who you want to be. And that's the kind of guy I want to talk to this hour. Because many of you 
agonize over this decision. I don't know. I've been married to my wife now for four years, and, you know, and, but we had a lot of fun together in the beginning, and now, I, you know, she's 195 pounds, and I try to tell her let's go to the gym together, and she doesn't ever want to go, and I go to the gym, and she's jealous because she's afraid I'm meeting other women there, but I'm a... Ba, 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 ba. Come on! Step it up! Be a man! Sack up, boys! This is what you need to do. If you haven't kicked her through the uprights, you need to do it like today. But many of you have done it. Many of you have manned up, stepped up to the plate, sacked up. Many of you recently... In fact, many of you, through listening to the program, many of you have stepped up your game. Many of you have stepped up to the plate. Many of you have said, get out. The real freaky listeners to this program have listened for a long time. You may recall that 10 years ago, somebody made a documentary about this show. And in one of the scenes of the documentary, I was sitting there with one of my exes. And they were asking her, about my flaws, my faults, the problems living with me, and she starts to tell them with me sitting there watching her do it. So the camera swings around, and the filmmaker asked me, how do you feel about that? And I looked at my ex, and I said, not pointed because we were sitting in my living room, I said, there's the door. You have that? Are you kidding me? You have that? Here's the actual scene from the film. Here it is. I think women want us to be bad boys and like a little bit of misogyny. They don't want guys who are pussies. They don't want guys who can be steamrolled. You married the professor. Yeah, little did I know what I was getting in for. Oh, really? You seem like... Well, the door is right over here. (laughs) (laughs) That really happened. And trust me, it was not contrived like reality TV. That guy was filming me for a year and a half, and I was getting punchy. After a while, you don't even notice there's cameras there. You don't care anymore. You start saying anything. And I said that, and I meant it. You don't like it? It's time to go. Guys, you have no idea how powerful that is. You have no idea. Women are so convinced that they have got the vagina, the one that's going to cure AIDS, the one that's going to, you know, uh, change the world, the one that's going to lead you by the nose and make you buy her things, not realizing that, you know what, uh, more more than every other person in the world has one. Seriously. You know, vaginas are like the green line here in Los Angeles. If you miss one, there'll be another one in an hour and 25 minutes. Not kidding. There's so many out there. When you exercise your power, when you say, you know what? I've had enough. <laughs> they don't know what to do. They think you're just going to tolerate it. Why do they want you to sign a contract? They want to lock you down so they can treat you like crap. Nothing gets under their skin more than telling them, you know what? You don't have the magic vagina. You don't. Out. I must say, the last couple that I kicked out, very rewarding. It felt great. I have never enjoyed living alone more. All you little sissies out there who call in, you're 21, you're afraid to live by yourself in your own apartment, oh, I'm all alone, and I need somebody because you miss your mommy. Trust me, boys. Once you mature and understand what I'm talking about, you're going to appreciate being able to do what you want, when you want. Know what I did today? I've got my second home up there in uh, Santa Barbara County. Bought a new 50-inch LCD flat screen TV. That's right. 1080p. This is where I'll be watching the NFL this fall. 
on this big flat screen. I did not have to run this up the flagpole. I did not have to check with the control tower or run this by headquarters to see if it's okay, you pussies. I just clicked the buy button on the Costco website, and that TV is wending its way right now up to my home. And there's not going to be anybody vacuuming at kickoff time, I'm telling you right now. Dead serious. So I, because I enjoy saying no, I, I, you know, because I live alone, I don't get to do this. I don't get to dump that bitch now. I live by myself. I can't say to somebody, there's the door. Nobody has the key. <laughs> so I have to live vicariously through you. If you have recently dumped that bitch, I want to hear all the dirty details. I will sit here in the studio pitching a tent as you tell me how, to, how you told that bitch to get lost. So if you have recently dumped that bitch, especially if you have recently dumped that bitch through the inspiration of a particular radio program, I want to hear all about it right now. Tom, Tom Likas. Like 1-800-5800-TOM. 1-800-5800-866. Now, how would you say dump that bitch in Chinese? What would that mean, literally? It would be like, uh, take that slut and throw her in the trash. <laughs> <laughs> It's the Tom Likas Show. It's the Tom Likas Show coming to you from a fallout shelter in Hollywood at 1 800 5 800 Tom. Have you dumped that bitch? Recently, do tell. It's Travis on the Tom Likas Show. Hello. Tom, how you doing, Dad? I'm okay, son. Good, good. I got to tell you, baby, it was cold-blooded. All right, I was dating this girl for about a year and a half. I have my own place. So, you know, she comes over, whatnot, spends the night. Nothing, you know, not like living together until one night we're having dinner. She says, so, babe, I was thinking, you know, when do you think we're going to, you know, maybe live together? Maybe, uh, you know, what's wrong with giving me a key? Instantaneously, you know. Oh. You got to go. There's See, the front door. They're waiting for the key. Any risk. They're waiting for the key. And you know what they're waiting for, by the way? Don't kid yourself. When they ask for the key, it's not because they love you. It's because they see a way to drop their eleven hundred dollar a month uh, apartment or whatever they have. And, oh, I and, and end up having over any bills, not paying for school, not paying her share of rent. I pay it by myself. I got a good job. I'm not stressing about money, and I am damn sure not going to let a bitch ruin my life. No way. Nothing. How did she react when you told her she's not getting the key? Well, what, what do you What do you mean? Uh, it was just It was just a just a thought. I, I mean, I wasn't trying to imply anything like right away. You know, maybe we can wait a few months. And I said no because once that's in your head right now, I know where it's going. Uh huh. Yep. I love that. Uh, and I owe it all to you, Dad. I owe it all to you because maybe two, three years ago, I would have thought about it if I was in this position, and I would have said, "Hmm, that sounds like a good idea." You know, have my girl live with me. Blah blah. Yeah. blah. And I've heard way too many stories listening to this show, Tom. Son, let me ask you a question. How did it feel to dump that bitch? It feels great because now I'm getting more ass in a rental car, my man. <laughs> you got to love it. You got to love it. Take me out with a bong hit, Dad. Here you go, son. It's one eight hundred five eight hundred Tom. That's our telephone number. Let's say hello to Tommy on the Tom Likas show. Hello, Tom. What's going on? Not much, Tommy. All right, man. I was with this chick about six months. I got was stupid. Started uh, working for her dad. Right. She uh, she caught me with another chick at my house. Well, wait. Let me start with this. You're twenty years old. Yes, Why sir. were you having a monogamous relationship? No, 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 no. You didn't let me finish. She okay. At my house with another chick. I got my own place. And just straight up but how could she catch you if she didn't have a key? No, no, no. The girl was walking out while my my chick was outside. All right, all right. All right, so mistake 
number one. Anyways, I'm looking for her, Dad. She gets all pissed off, starts bringing up all the weed you're smoking, all the money you're spending, blah, 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 blah. I'm going to tell my dad. So for all the guys that don't know, when you tell a girl there's the door, you do not know how that changes their attitude. It changes them 100%. You tell them to hit the door, and they're just like, what? What? What happened? Oh, yeah. Yeah. So, I can't tell you how many, after I've said there's the door, so, how many dinners I've had made for me. Dude, it's ridiculous. How they, they know back you off. They know you're messing around. That's right. You know? Anyways, so I'm working for her dad. She tells her dad, all right, Tommy, messing around on me, smoking, doing all this stuff. He calls me in his office, says, hey, uh, you broke up with bro, or, you know, blah, 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 and all this stuff. He's like, you're keeping your job. And that was it. I was broken up with her. Anyway, she started being a little bitch afterwards. He took her car away from her and gave it to me for a company car. <laughs> Mercedes Mercedes 350. Really? Yeah, man. Brand new. Well, not brand new. It's like 07, but come on. Wow. Yeah, man. So now I still got my job. She's cooler than ever. And now she knows that I'm with other people. How great is that? It's ridiculous. And the dad's cool with it. Like, I didn't get it. I did not get it. Yeah, we can't say that word three times. Oh, my God. (laughs) My bad. But anyway, yeah, you you, got to make sure you got that condom 100% of the time because that's how those chicks try to level the playing field. Oh, yeah. They'll they'll, they'll, uh, trap you right up. Right. And uh, the, right then, up. then it'd be like, "Well, now you're my boyfriend. Look at this." Yeah, yeah, read it. Yeah, well, you'll yeah, never yeah. see your baby. <laughs> yeah, but they'll see your wallet. <laughs> That's exactly right. Yeah. Ridiculous. Tom, take me out, Kobe style. Here you go, Tommy. Oh. Oh. This is about us. Oh. She's so special to me. Oh. Yeah, it beats in my heart. Oh. Yeah, the air I breathe. Oh. She's so special to me. Oh. It's 1-800-5800-TOM. Chris is listening to our online stream in Kitchener, Ontario. Hello. Hey, Tom. How you doing? I'm doing good. Uh, Long-time listener, first-time caller. Long-time listener, first-time caller. Yeah. So, um, yeah, I just broke up with my wife of about three years. We... I split up with her about three weeks ago. And uh, why did you do that? Well, like you've been talking about, she's very controlling, very jealous. Um, since me and her got married, she doesn't like me going out, you know, hanging out with my friends. You know, I'm pretty much on lockdown. So I pretty much had enough yeah. of her, you know, trying to tell me what to do. Right. So uh, three weeks ago... I went out with a friend of mine, and me and her had been arguing for, like, maybe the past couple of months. So right. I came back home with a friend of mine, and she asked me a very stupid question. She asked me, uh, where did you sleep last night? So to me, that was just, to me, that was the end. I couldn't take it anymore. So I just started packing my, my stuff. Uh-huh. Without a word. I hopped in my friend's car. And I just took off. <laughs> I, even, I didn't even say one word to her. I just I acted like she wasn't there. Did she blow up your phone? Uh, yeah, she tried calling me a few times. I mean, we're still talking right now because I have a an eight month old daughter from her. Why'd you do that? Well, because we were married for three years. I mean, yeah, yeah. So but she was married. already controlling seventeen months ago, right? Right. So if somebody's acting like that, just for the other guys out there, for their benefit, if somebody's acting controlling, you don't want to be having a baby with them. Well, before be, she, she actually started acting controlling after we had the baby, you know. Because she knew she had you trapped. Yeah, pretty much. So so I still have to talk to her, you know, for the sake of my kid. You know, I, I, I don't want to be one of those, you know, deadbeat dads who, who, who isn't around for his kid. So right. I still want to have a relationship with my kid, but as far as me and her were done. And uh, what's funny is that just uh, yesterday, uh, when I went to visit my kid, she was talking about us getting a place together. Oh, oh, oh. 
so so she's trying to she's trying to work her way back into my life. But I just just act like I didn't hear what she said. I just kind of changed the subject. But you know, right now right now she has a house. I'm not even living in the house anymore. She has a house right now. I'm living in like in a one room, um, one room in like a five bedroom house. I'm living in a room. Um, but I'm as I'm happier than I was. Two years ago. Well, you know why divorce costs so much, right? Yeah. You know why? Why? Because it's worth it. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> you know. <laughs> well, right now I'm 30 years old. Um, you know, uh, she has the she has the car. I don't have a car right now. She she took the car. She has the house, but I'm so happy. You know, because I because I'm free. Because I can do whatever I want to do. And I don't have to answer to anybody. You know, my my independence is more important to me than any kind of wealth or any kind of security as long as I'm independent as long as I make my own decisions so so that that's that to me that's the most important thing for a man is to be independent and not have a woman tell him what to do when to do and how to do you know I totally agree with that yeah so you're so. not going to be looking for another one of these relationships are you Oh no no I'm done I'm done like I'm 30 years old and I don't see myself ever getting married again like me and her me and her I've even had this conversation she asked me okay what if me don't work out are you gonna look for somebody else I'm like no like after you I'm done I I can't deal with with another crazy wife you know like I'm I've had it with as far as being in long term relationships with, with women I mean I'll keep sleeping with women. I love women, but I'm not gonna be in any kind of long-term relationship anymore. Like I'm done. You know, I'm I'm gonna spend the rest of my 30, 40, 50 year life just having fun and being happy. Good for you. Yeah. So yeah, you know, I, I've been listening to you for uh, like almost five, six years now, and you know, I I I, I haven't had a chance to call till now because I liked your your topic, and I just broke up with my. With my wife, so I just thought I'd you know call in to to let you know what was going on. Well, I'm proud of you, Chris. Yeah. All right. Okay. One eight hundred five eight hundred. Tom, have you dumped that bitch, Andrew, on the Tom Likas show? Hello. Hello, Tom. Hello, Andrew. How you doing, my friend? Do you care? Yes, I do. I'm doing great. All right. Well, uh, I was just calling to let you know that I uh, dumped that bitch about three days ago. She, uh, was, I, I caught her texting her ex-boyfriend that she dated for about three years. And, uh, you know, I was tired of it. I was like, you know, I don't, I don't need to, you know, if you're going to keep talking to him while you're with me, you know? And what did she say? She's like, oh, we're just friends now. Like, you know, they, they, they bought a dog together when they were together. So they still they still share the dog. Like, so the dog sometimes at his house and sometimes at her house. So, like, you know, she still see, she still sees them when she drops off the dog. But, uh, you know, I, I, was, I was over that. You know, I wasn't having that anymore. Why do you need a girlfriend at 20 years old, Andrew? You know, Tom, I'm... I was dumb. I thought I was in love. But you even know? if you were, you're too young to have a girlfriend. You're too young to be committed to one person. Yeah, I, I understand that now. I mean, I, I've been telling you that, but clearly you thought you knew more than I did. Yeah. You know, I thought I was the uh, exception of the rule, Tom, like all of you. Right. You but know? now you see what that means. Yeah. But, uh, you know, they're all the same. All the chicks, you know. She was also telling me, you know, like, I'm I'm tired of you smoking pot and stuff. You know, I was like, I go to school and go to work full time, like, trying to make something of myself. And I only smoke on the weekends, like, you know. And she was, like, threatening to, like, you know, like, oh, well, I don't want to see you anymore if you're going to be a pothead. Like, you know, I'm, I, like, smoke on, like, once a month, you know. Well, why should you have to explain it? If you wanted to smoke every day, that's none of her business. You were smoking weed before you met her. Exactly. My business. I, what I do with my friends is my friend time. You know. That's right. Now, now I got plenty of time for that. Perfect. Now don't don't be getting yourself into another situation like that. Okay. Yeah. Pump them and dump them. I thank you for that, Tom.
Thank you for that. Well, but, Andrew, uh, thank you for this. Tom Likas. 1-800-5800-TOM. 1-800-5800-866. I was in the shower, and I got out of the shower, and my wife was checking my cell phone. And I swear to God, for like the last week, every day I get home, she's like, what What number was this? What number was that? Who is this? Who is that? She's like, who is Kim? I feel like telling her, hey, bitch, Kim's the girl I'm banging behind your back. It's the Tom Likas Show. Hollywood, it's the Tom Likas Show at 1-800-5800-TOM. Have you dumped that bitch recently? Have you done it? It's Joe on the Tom Likas Show. Hello. Hey, how's it going, Tom? Great. Yeah, well, as for me, uh, today's the last straw. I'm about to dump my chick today after about three years. Uh, sad enough, you know. And uh, By the way, you're 24. Why do you have a chick to dump? Um, about when I was like about 19, I was with this girl. She was my high school girlfriend. Uh, I ended up having a kid. You can't say that on the air, son. Oh, I'm sorry. I'm sorry about that. Uh, why did, why did you have uh, a kid at 21? Why'd you do that? Just young and dumb. That's all I can say. You were young and dumb. Young and dumb. Did you think uh, that was a good idea or was it just a complete accident? It was complete accident. In other words, you had weren't using a condom. weren't using a condom. weren't using protection. Just so it's not an accident. You were just stupid. Yeah, stupid, stupid accident. That's all I can say. And uh, anyways, I uh, um, wasn't about a good couple of years, and then I just decided about two years ago to get back with her. Biggest mistake of my life. I got back with her, um, and uh, I just been. She's just lazy and controlling. Well, you knew what she was like when you when she moved out, and you knew what she was like when you moved her back in. No, no, no. She was going to work when she wasn't living with me, and then when she came with me, she started slacking off, and then and I was like, "You need to go to work," you know. And she was just like, "Oh yeah, I will. I'll find a job." So, anyway, she would work here and there, there and here, but really nothing, you know. And uh, just today, I'm just about to go upstairs right now as we speak and pack all my stuff. It's about time. Yeah. Tell By me the way, it. do you have a lease? Yeah. I've been going, I mean, I've been going out, like, uh, I've been going out for the past month or two, and it's just been, like... Well, that's usually what happens before people leave. Let me ask you this question, Joe. Do you have a lease? No, no lease. No, no, no lease. So uh, you're going to get out, and no drama. Yeah. You just, well, when you're renting, you usually have a lease. No, no, I just, I'm just renting. I already talked to my manager about it. I told him I was going to be leaving, and he was just like, okay, that's fine, you know? And then he was just like, yeah, just, uh, you know, just let me know ahead of time. And I already let him know, like, last week that I was about to leave, and I'm going to do it today, right now. And she's not going to come in while you're doing it, is she? No, no, no. She's at her mom's house right now. No drama, no nothing. Yeah, no, no drama. When she comes back, it's going to be all empty, and I'm going to be gone. By the way, are you paying the utilities? No, no, I don't pay utilities right here. So, so you I'm don't gonna, not telephone, yeah, not way. wait, 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 not telephone, not cable, not anything. No, no, no. Nothing. Water, nothing. Gas. No, the manager pays everything. Everything. He pays all the utilities. Wow. Yeah. What a deal! And that apartment's going to be available soon. Huh? <laughs> <laughs> that's what I'm saying. So I'm about to grab all my stuff right now and just take off, you know, and uh. Yeah, I'm going to move in with a friend of mine, and, uh, you know, I've been talking to him about it for the past month, and he's just like, yeah, you, can, you know, because he has a four-bedroom house, he's like, you could rent a room out, 300 a month, and, you know, I'm like, cool. I love perfect. it. Yeah, I'm like, perfect, you know? He's single, too, so it's going to be the chick spot. Love it. Yeah, yeah. So, take me out of... Uh, Joe, you're not going to make this mistake again, are you? No, no, no. Seriously? So, no, I'm not. That's it. It's end for me. That's it. I'm just going to get a lot of tail and just live my young life while I'm still young, you know? Good. Yeah, yeah. So uh, can you take me out old school? Well, of course I can. one 800 800 tom That's our telephone number. It's Todd on the Tom Likas Show. Hello. Hey, what's going on, Tom? Not much, Todd. Hey, let me tell you about my story. First of all, uh, 
I met this incredibly hot chick, you know, and I had an idea it wasn't going to work out because we had kind of a long distance thing going on. And uh, I wound up moving, you know, I met her at the beach and I wound up moving down to the beach. I found a killer pad, my own pad, good price, you know. And she, she started, uh, you know, the telltale signs like you always talk about. She started leaving her stuff around, you know, dresses and the toothbrush and all that kind of stuff. And then, uh, you know, one night I came home, I was tired and I fell asleep and she was kind of in a bitchy mood and she decided to wake me up and complain about, uh, you know, like the toilet seat and some other stuff. And I was so irate and I basically told her, hey, if you don't like it, there's the door. How did she react to that? Oh, she couldn't believe that I said it. She stormed out, you know, and she was all upset and she wasn't happy. I love when they storm out. It just makes it easier for me to pack my things and get the hell out. You know, and then she she left all her stuff. I just basically bossed it all up and said, hey, you want your stuff? Here it is. You know, put it out in the front door, and that was it. <laughs> and now I'm getting more ass in the toilet. <laughs> alive, found by the beach, you know, start my own company. I Come love that. Love anyway. it. Todd, thank you for that. 1-800-5800-TOM. That's our telephone number. Kevin on the Tom Likas Show. Hello. Tom. Kevin. What's up, Dad? Not much, son. Hey, you're more like God to me because I used to listen to you in my sleep, and that gave me the, the courage to uh, just throw it all in the garbage. I was uh, in the car with my wife driving, and we got in a big argument. She said, why don't you, if you don't like it, why don't you just get, you know, the blank out? Said, pull over. Got out. Called my mom. Told her I'm going to come stay with her for about two weeks, three weeks, plus on the place. And, uh, that was it. Called the cab. Went to mom's house. Now, uh, now I'm actually running my mom's house. She moved up to my sister's. I live in a five-bedroom house in Huntington Beach. And, uh. Couldn't tell you, things are going Now, what was it that she she said, if you don't like it, get out? What was it again that she she oh, was doing? Just a constant nagging and complaining. Nothing was ever good enough. We, we had a two-bedroom, two-bath condo. That wasn't good enough. It was always more, more, more. She did work. I'll give her that. But you know what? I was just through of all the complaining. Said, just pull over, let me out. Call the cab. There it was. How um, great is that? And did she try to call you after that? Did she blow up your phone? Uh, no, not until she found out I was, like, dating a bunch of people through, like, I guess, word of mouth. <laughs> and then, Tom, I got offered hotel rooms, dinners, dates, movies. No, no, no. No way. Goodbye. I love when they find out I'm dating others. And then when I did it, I thought, you know what, that must have been Tom talking in my head. I listened to you while I'm sleeping, you know, the 3 a.m. to 6 a.m. or whatever you're on. And uh, I think that's what did it for me. That yeah, I think that's what did it. I love that, Kevin. Nice. Hey, can you take me out of style, buddy? I certainly can. Oh. Oh. This is about us. Oh. She's so special to me. Oh. Yeah, it beats in my heart. Oh. Yeah, the air I breathe. Oh. She's so special to me. Oh. One eight hundred five eight hundred Tom. That's our telephone number. Have you dumped that bitch recently? <laughs> Jay on the Tom Likas show. Hello. What's up, Tom? Not much, Jay. How you doing? Do you care? I do care. I'm doing great. That's good. Yeah. Well, let me tell you this story real quick. I was on and off with this girl for about three years. Big mistake. I know I shouldn't have done that in the first place. And the uh, chick was totally bipolar, like, would flip out from she'd be good one second, crazy the next. Uh, she did every single classic sign that you tell me, like, that you tell us on the radio about. She tried looking for condoms. She tried to tell me she was on uh, birth control. She tried to get me to move in with her. Just a anything you could think of, she tried to do. And uh, about a month ago, I was like, you know what, I'm just, I'm tired of this. And, I, and then from one day to the next, I just I changed my number, and <laughs> she could never get hold of me again. How, and so do you know how she reacted to that? Did anybody talk to you about that? Uh, yeah, I, I, I'm, I'm friends with one of her friends, and I know she was looking for me, but supposedly she was all hurt and whatnot. But, hey, I don't care. I just wanted to get her out of my life. Boo-hoo-hoo. -hoo. 
Yeah, thanks, Tom. Uh, can you take me out with a bong rip? I certainly can. One eight hundred five eight hundred Tom. That's our telephone number. Oscar on the Tom Like It Show. Hello, Oscar. Hello, Dad. Hello, son. Oh man, how are you? Do you care? Oh, I do care. I'm doing great. That's awesome, bro. Uh, short time listener, first time caller. I've been listening to your show for about three months, and that's all it took for me, man, to make my mind and say, you know, bitch, screw you. I'm gone. How did you? Uh, how... We've been together for about three years and a half. We've been engaged for almost a year now. And um, after that uh, six months engagement kind of thing, it came down to like every other day we'd get in an argument and all that. So I live by myself, you know, have my own apartment, have an all right job, you know, independent and all that. And one day she comes in with this plant and a nice stamp for me. And I'm like, okay, that's that's nice, but you got to take it back. Otherwise, I'm going to throw it away or I'm going to dump it in the trash or sell it, you know, whichever. So, it's an odd, it's an odd. She, she calmed me down, started kissing, we find up and then having sex, you know. That's I guess that's the answer for all the girls to shove it guys love, you know, sex. Well, next time she came, two days later, she didn't find the cat and the nice stamp. And she asked me, what's wrong with it? I was like, I told you you're supposed to take them out. Then she started complaining about it. I was like, hey, you know what? The minute we live together, you can bring as many crap as you want. But this is my place, live my independence, and my freedom alone. How did she react? Oh, man, she was nuts, dude. She was nuts. So she said, like, let's go. Take me to my mom's house. So I took her that day to her mom's house. She just ran in. She was yelling at me. Her mom was all like, what's going on? She just laughed. I just looked at her and smiled back. She slammed the door at me, and I was like, all right, fine, you know? I just turned around, <laughs> walked away. <laughs> As I got in my car, I turned it on, I saw her walking down the stairs. She took on her ring, and then she threw it on my face. And I was like, what the hell? And she's all like, well, if you don't care about me, then we shouldn't be engaged together, you know? And I was like, well, not even that. We shouldn't even be together. She's like, what are you talking about? Well, I was like, you know what I'm talking about. I'm not gonna, I'm gonna, I'm not gonna stand this three year old trying to be doing in front of your mom. Anyways, long story short, I got the ring. She was all yelling at me. And she told me, oh, I want you to forget about. Where did me. you get this away. idea to get married? By the way, you know what? I think I blame the parents for this, bro. The parents. Well, I'm Hispanic. I'm Mexican, and I don't know about any other um. Religions or tr family traditions that other um, races have, but I think it's mostly the parents. They tell you, "Oh, you should, like, you know, be with, with with that person, lover, for you to have sex and all that." I think that's mostly the main idea you get when you're a little kid, when you're growing up. That's when you have high school sweethearts and you don't enjoy the life the way you should, man. She's my high school sweetheart, and trust me, Tom. If I if I wasn't with her back in high school, I could have way so much fun, dude. I regret that. I regret that. No, nope, time to make up for lost time, Oscar. Thanks all for the call. I appreciate it. The Tom Likas Show.